Around 1910, when the concept of the Tiger Mother was far from being a thing, a man named Boris Sidus was already making waves with his unique approach to raising children. Little did anyone know that his methods would shape the life of his extraordinary son. William James Sidus, a name that echoes brilliance, was often considered by those who knew him to be the smartest man to have ever graced this planet. His story is nothing short of awe-inspiring. Let's delve into the intriguing tale of William James Sidus, a genius ahead of his time. Hey, this is Theos, and you are watching the cosmological reality where we unravel the inner workings of the universe piece by piece. Now let's talk about Sidus. Believe it or not, at just 18 months old, this kid was already flipping through the New York Times. Yes, you heard that right. While most of us were still figuring out how to eat solid food, Sidus was diving headfirst into the world of reading. Sidus had the kind of upbringing that set him on a path of brilliance. Both of his parents were highly educated and, recognizing his potential, they nurtured his thirst for knowledge right from the beginning. But wait, it gets even more extraordinary. By the time Sidus turned six, he had already mastered not just one or two, but a staggering eight languages. And if that wasn't impressive enough, he even went on to create his very own language, which he aptly named Vendergood. And let's not forget his remarkable talent for writing. Sidus didn't just stop at languages. He also poured his thoughts and emotions into poetry, crafting a novel, and even conceptualizing a constitution for a utopian society. I mean, talk about the multifaceted genius. Fast forward a few years, and Sidus accomplished what most of us can only dream of. At the tender age of 11, he secured a spot at the prestigious Harvard University. Can you imagine being a preteen walking through the hallowed halls of academic excellence? And here's where it gets even crazier. By the time he turned 16, not only did he graduate from Harvard, but he did so with flying colors, earning the distinction of cum laude. Who needs a driver's license when you have a Harvard diploma at 16, am I right? Sidus fearlessly took on the role of lecturer at the Harvard Mathematical Club, captivating his audience with mind-boggling concepts like four-dimensional bodies. I don't know about you, but I'm still trying to wrap my head around three dimensions. Four? That's a whole new level of brain gymnastics. Furthermore, Sidus astounded the world once again in 1925 with the publication of his groundbreaking book, The Animate and the Inanimate. In this remarkable work, he delved into the origin of life through the lens of entropy and negative temperature. What's truly remarkable is that he proposed concepts like dark matter and black holes long before they were confirmed by observational evidence, showcasing his ahead-of-his-time thinking. But Sidus didn't stop there. He went on to develop his very own theory of the universe, which he aptly named the Cosmic Center Theory. According to Sidus, the entire universe is structured around a central point, the ultimate origin of all energy and matter. He believed that this point constantly expands and contracts, giving rise to cycles of creation and destruction. He also put forth the idea of multiple universes, each with its own unique set of physical laws. As we delve into Sidus's theories, it's essential to acknowledge the complexity of the concepts he explored. Sidus analyzed life through the lens of thermodynamics, which concerns the behavior of energy and heat in our universe. He argued that life, being a form of order, resists the natural process of entropy, the tendency of things to become disordered and chaotic. Sidus proposed that living organisms actively use available energy to maintain their structure and function, acting as guardians of order in a chaotic universe. But that's not all. Sidus took things to a whole new level by introducing the concept of negative temperature. Imagine matter that has even more energy than anything with positive temperature. Sidus suggested that this mind-boggling form of matter exists in our universe and behaves in bizarre ways. For example, instead of expanding when heated and contracting when cooled like normal matter, negative temperature matter would do the exact opposite. It's like defying the laws of nature. Sidus' theories even challenged the arrow of time itself. He believed that time is not fixed, but rather depends on the perspective of the observer. It's like watching a movie in reverse. It can go both ways. Sidus proposed the idea of multiple universes with different laws of physics and different directions of time. It's like a cosmic symphony of possibilities. According to Sidus, life originated from positive temperature matter, but somehow crossed over into the realm of negative temperature matter. He saw living organisms as composed of this extraordinary matter that can reverse the direction of time and entropy. He even pondered the idea that stars, 
those distant celestial objects might just be living beings experiencing cycles of expansion and contraction. It's a mind-expanding vision of life in the universe. Now here's the thing. Sidus' theories were far from ordinary. They stirred up controversy and were met with skepticism from the scientific community. But you have to appreciate his originality and creativity. Sidus dared to tackle the mysteries of life using the language of physics and mathematics, pushing the boundaries of our understanding. In his later years, Sidus chose a path of seclusion, actively avoiding the public eye. He immersed himself in various humble occupations, working as a bookkeeper, clerk and typist, all while assuming different pseudonyms to pursue his passion for writing. His writings spanned a wide range of topics, including history, politics, and cosmology. However, Sidus' life was not without its share of challenges. In 1919, he found himself arrested for his involvement in a socialist May Day parade, facing the consequences of his convictions. Later in 1937, he was embroiled in a legal battle with the New Yorker magazine, which sued him for libel after he accused them of violating his privacy. Tragically, on July 17, 1944, at the age of 46, William James Sidus passed away due to a cerebral hemorrhage in Boston. His departure left behind an unfinished manuscript titled The Tribes and the States, a testament to his unyielding intellectual curiosity. The manuscript aimed to trace the rich history of North America from 1000 BC to 1775 AD, a testament to his insatiable thirst for knowledge. As we reach the end of our awe-inspiring journey into the remarkable life of William James Sidus, we can't help but marvel at the legacy he left behind. His intellectual prowess and unyielding curiosity propelled him to explore the depths of knowledge in ways that were both unconventional and daring. Let us carry the spirit of Sidus's relentless pursuit of knowledge in our own lives, embracing the uncharted, the unconventional, and the extraordinary by following in the footsteps of those who dared to dream beyond the limitations of their time, who knows what marvels we may uncover.